every collector, enthusiast, hobbyist, backyard mechanic, racer, or broken car hoarder worth their salt has probably dreamed of owning one of these at one point or another. I know I certainly have. But to find a really good one isn't so simple. And then there's the question of money. Where would you safely store it? Where would you get parts for it? Would you use it often enough to make it worthwhile? Is flipping through six gears with your left hand feasible? How would you insure it? Would you wind up sleeping in it if you actually bought one and your significant other gave you the boot? I'm not talking about that old Datsun strapped to the deck. That's just there so I didn't waste container space shipping the automotive holy grail to Canada. Let's just unload that and get it out of the way. This is a 2001 Nissan Atlas APR72 PV with a 5 liter 4 cylinder 6 speed diesel and a Kyokuto deck. The cab is in unicorn condition, which is completely incomprehensible considering the commercial life it's had since 2001. Look at the wheel arches and side steps, which have their original paint. These points on a commercial cab over usually have their paint rubbed off to raw steel after a few short years of drivers climbing in and out of them. And the seat cushion appears to have been used by drivers that have had the ability to levitate over the course of 90,000 odd kilometers. Even in Japan, despite the pride of ownership reputation, the interiors of commercial vehicles quite often resemble confetti or canine chew toys. This one still looks like it's just come off the showroom display floor. Two deep cycle batteries wired in series and no inverter mean everything in here is 24 volts. From the cigarette lighter and radio to useful features like the ability to fold your fire mirror forward and out of the way. In reverse, there's a loud back buzz, which can be put into stealth mode. The cab is quite wide, with three reasonably roomy seats. The center seat can be folded down to function as a clipboard, and is the perfect spot to leave your pre-flight checklist, or to keep your factory supplied comic book handy. The deck manual really transcends language with the power of manga, which brings us to the big, red, obvious PTO lever and what it's there for. This atlas was owned by a Nissan dealership in Gifu Prefecture when we found it with the help of Kyokuto. The Kyokuto company is one of two coach builders in Japan that will take a commercial chassis and install their own rollback or full flat loader onto trucks. This isn't your standard tilt loader. A PTO is engaged to tilt the deck up and drop a stabilizing stinger onto the ground. Then a chain track, gear rolling system, is used to roll the bed down past the chassis. Once the deck touches down, steel rollers at the stern of the deck will continue rolling back until the deck is completely aft of the chassis. The front of the deck tracks down along the chain's path to the bottom of the stinger until it too is resting flat on the ground. All of the bed's lines are kept organized in a safe position by a flexible rubber track. Once flat, lower the ramp gate and you're driving onto a fully flat deck with zero concern for angling a low car up onto an incline while deleting your lower lip, and no concerns for smashing your door into a trailer wheel arch as you try and get out. Anybody that is towed on a standard car trailer knows this frustration. Of course, if you don't want to or can't drive a car up, there's a winch with a double purchase block system to tow your car on board. The Kyokuto deck is capable of pulling and loading a 3000 kilogram car, and while all of this can be controlled through various points on the bed, both the bed and the winch can be controlled by remote. To get to the engine, unlatch the cab, heave it forward, and hope you didn't leave anything breakable sitting out. The engine is a 4HJ1 overhead cam 4-cylinder diesel with just about 5,000 cc's of displacement, borrowed from an Isuzu. There is direct injection from a mechanically timed pump. There's no turbo, just a whole lot of grunt. Power is about 150 horsepower at 3,500 rpm, and 270 foot-pounds of torque at 1,600 rpm. You'll notice the leaf springs in front. The truck only weighs 3,900 kilos, but the suspension is set up for another 3,000 kilogram load, so driving the Atlas around unloaded is less comfortable than with a car on top. Whether you're driving loaded or unloaded, the Atlas is a joy to drive compared to towing a trailer. My introduction to this truck was 40 feet in reverse, in the dark, with about an inch to spare on either side of the container wall, an amazingly valuable car strapped to the deck, 
and we all came out unscathed. Visibility is excellent with tall windows and a massive upright expanse of windshield in front. You sit higher than any stock American style pickup on the road and can see over most traffic with the exception of other commercial trucks. Once you have the six speed shift pattern sorted and decide to abandon the low range first gear, wheeling about is pretty easy. The engine is responsive, the engine brake keeps things composed, and the cab over tight turn maneuverability makes this truck seem much smaller and more agile than its 7.5 meter length. Sitting upright, leaning over a huge steering wheel that is aimed near parallel to the road, hand over hand steering is pretty fun. One of the challenges of bringing a commercial truck over from Japan and meeting the needs of North American roadways is finding a truck that's geared to keep up with our highways. A lot of the late 90s and early 2000s trucks will top out at 80 or 90 kilometers an hour, so you want to find something with taller geared 6 speed or a turbo. The Atlas will maintain 100 kilometers an hour with reasonable ease, even loaded. Because I dealt directly with Kyokuto for the export of this truck, I had that company retrieve the Atlas from its old Nissan dealership in Gifu and give it a good once over before sending it to port for container packing. That company was amazing to deal with and makes a spectacular line of products with their rollback hardware. With their help we managed to import a truck that could arrive at a concourse event with a concourse car on its back and the truck would steal the show. There are no worries about jackknifing your expensive trailer into your tow rig while you're trying to maneuver into a parking spot. I've always found towing to be a bit of a white knuckle chore, with trailer wheels on the average car trailer completely filling most lanes, constantly scanning mirrors to check lane placement with very little room for error. At 217 centimeters wide and wheels tucked underneath the deck, there's very little of that with the Atlas. Rivaling the price of a good, new, covered trailer, this Atlas was a spectacular import, and the question about what vehicle to use to tow your wide, nerve-wracking blind spot car trailer can be put to rest. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to follow the adventures of this truck in North America, along with tons of other really cool JDMs and restorations, follow along at Mugen Beat on Instagram. And if at any point in this video you felt a little shortchanged on GTR footage, there will be a forthcoming R34 video. Thanks again.